The scientists tracking the great white shark spotted not far from New York City, and scientists aren't the only ones tracking the shark. That website. In nature's hunt, the rule seems simple. The mightiest is the ruler. Or is it? The great white shark is feared by many for its immense power and razor-sharp teeth. But even this mighty hunter isn't invincible. In 2003, Australian scientists attached a tracker to a massive nine-foot great white only to discover that the shark mysteriously vanished, leaving behind only the tracker. Now this is all part of a research project that Todd Battis had the chance to join on an earlier mission in search of great whites in the Atlantic Ocean. The question remains, what could possibly be strong enough to bring down such a feared creature? Was it a giant squid, a killer whale, or something far more ancient and terrifying? Well, let's discover the mystery behind the great white shark eaten by the monster. Yeah, we've just come back from Port Lincoln in South Australia, and while we were over there, we ran into one of the most remarkable animals I've ever seen. A Dark Discovery. Back in 2003, filmmakers Dave and Jennings Riggs were shooting a nature documentary on a beach in Bremer Bay, Australia. Everything was going smoothly, until they stumbled upon something shocking. Nine massive sperm whales had washed up on the shore, lifeless. But that wasn't the only surprise. As they got closer, they noticed something else lurking in the water several great white sharks swimming unusually close to the shore. The sharks had caught the scent of the whale carcasses and were there for a feast. While most people might have backed away, Dave saw a unique opportunity. He quickly called in a team of scientists who arrived with special geotagging equipment. The plan? Tag the sharks to track their movements and learn more about their migration patterns. So the team got to work. From a boat, they used long poles with needles at the end, to carefully attach the tags to the shark's dorsal fins. Before we continue, there's a picture that recently went viral. In the picture, we can see a giant shark that has been chained up, but it's still very aggressive, and some divers are trying to figure out how to get out of the situation. What do you think about it? Let us know in the comments. The Hunt for Answers The first shark they tagged was a nine-foot-long female, which they named Shark Alpha. At the time, it seemed like a straightforward migration study, but things soon took a bizarre turn. Just four months later, Alpha's tag mysteriously washed up on shore with no trace of the shark. Puzzled, the scientists dug into the data from the tag, and what they found left them stunned. On Christmas Eve, just before midnight, everything seemed normal as Alpha swam along. Then, out of nowhere, her behavior changed drastically. She suddenly veered off course and began a rapid dive into the ocean. She kept plunging deeper and deeper until she reached an incredible depth of about 1,900 feet. That depth, nearly 1,000 feet deeper than great whites normally dive, was already strange enough. But what really shocked the researchers was what came next. Just seconds after hitting that depth, the tag's temperature readings suddenly spiked. The surrounding water had been a chilly 46 degrees Fahrenheit, but now the tag was reading a toasty 76 degrees. Into the abyss. The scientists were baffled. After analyzing the data, they all reached the same unsettling conclusion. The tag must have ended up inside the stomach of a much larger and faster predator. And remember, Shark Alpha wasn't just any shark. Weighing nearly a ton and packed with raw muscle, she was a powerful force in the ocean, not easily taken down. Yet something had overpowered her, dragging her deep into the ocean's abyss where she likely met a grim and terrifying end. Whatever ate Shark Alpha had to be a near unstoppable force. But how do you solve a mystery so bizarre it left scientists scratching their heads for years? The only real clues were in the shark's final data recordings. Cryptic, but packed with hints. No one was more determined to crack the case than Dave Riggs. Dave became obsessed with the exact spot where Shark Alpha's story ended, deep in Australia's wild southern ocean. He believed the truth was buried there in a place he called the Kill Zone. This area lies within a vast undersea valley that plunges nearly three miles, over twice the depth of the Grand Canyon. And this place isn't just deep, it's alive. Natural gases and nutrients leaking from the Earth's crust attract swarms of small sea creatures to the ocean floor, which in turn draws in predators. Lots of them. The result is a deadly battleground, teeming with great white sharks, killer whales, and massive squid, 
all fighting for dominance. It's a deep sea death valley, pure nightmare fuel. But Dave wasn't deterred. In fact, he decided the only way to uncover the truth was to go down there himself. Yep, straight into the belly of the beast. Now there's a fine line between courage and craziness, and Dave seemed more than happy to dance right on it. Knowing a regular dive would be suicidal, he got to work on building his own makeshift underwater vehicle for the mission. Armed with a metal frame, parts salvaged from an old lawnmower, and five layers of protective fiberglass, Dave's homemade underwater vehicle was theoretically tough enough to withstand attacks from even the most dangerous sea creatures. But still, would you trust your life to something like that? Floating around in shark-infested waters? And, let's be real, if a great white got eaten by something down there, would you want to find out what it was? The Search for the Predator Despite the risks, Dave managed to round up a team just as adventurous or crazy as he was. They piled into the contraption, ready to dive into the unknown. The moment they hit the water, things got intense. Sharks and killer whales were everywhere. Just 65 feet below the surface, the team found themselves surrounded by about 40 whaler sharks, plus an entire pod of orcas. It was like swimming through a live-action feeding frenzy. It didn't take long for them to realize this mission was far more dangerous than they had anticipated. If they stuck around, they'd risk getting attacked by so many predators that escape would be impossible. Reluctantly, the team was forced to abandon the dive and return to the surface. But all wasn't lost. While they didn't get to explore the depths of the kill zone, they did make a key discovery. Two predators seemed especially dominant in the area, the whaler sharks and killer whales. And this raised even more questions about what, or who, was really at the top of the food chain in these mysterious waters. Killer whales and whaler sharks. Could one of them have been responsible for turning shark alpha into fish food? Let's break it down. Whaler sharks, though fierce, usually don't grow larger than a typical great white, so it's hard to imagine one effortlessly overpowering a powerhouse like Shark Alpha. But killer whales? That's a different story. These ocean giants can grow over 30 feet long, easily more than three times the size of Shark Alpha, and they're the only known natural predators of great whites. Not only are orcas powerful enough to take on a shark, but they're also fast enough to outswim one in a chase. On paper, it seems like we have our culprit, but as always, things aren't that simple. If you recall, the tag data showed Shark Alpha met its grim fate 1,900 feet below the surface, and that's a problem. Killer whales are surface hunters. They rarely dive deeper than a few hundred feet to search for prey. The Giant Squid Hypothesis So, the killer whale theory doesn't line up with the fact. Orcas have an internal temperature similar to ours, around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but the tag recorded a much cooler 78 degrees Fahrenheit inside the Predator. That's way off, which means, frustratingly, we're back to square one. If it wasn't a killer whale or a whaler shark, then what else could have overpowered Shark Alpha? Well, let me introduce our next suspect, the giant squid. These elusive deep sea creatures are shrouded in mystery, they live so far below the surface that studying them is incredibly challenging. But if you're looking for a shadowy predator capable of something extraordinary, the deep ocean is the perfect place to start. And here's the kicker. Giant squid are known to live at depth between 1,000 and 2,000 feet, precisely where Shark Alpha met its grim end. So, how does the giant squid stack up against a great white shark? For starters, it's massive. The largest recorded specimen measured a jaw-dropping 59 feet long and weighed nearly a ton, about 10 times the size of an average person. But size isn't their only advantage. These squids come equipped with long, muscular tentacles covered in suction cups. If one of them wrapped around a shark, those powerful arms could hold it tight, pulling it deeper into the dark abyss. Could it be that one of these enormous sea monsters ambushed Shark Alpha, overpowering it and dragging it into the depths? If so, it might explain why the shark's final moments were recorded at such a dangerous depth. It's a chilling thought. But in the mysterious depths of the ocean, anything is possible. Right, giant squid have some serious reach, snatching prey from as far as 33 feet away with their long feeding tentacles. Usually they go for smaller fish and shrimp, but new evidence suggests sharks might not be off the menu after all. In 2020, a white tip shark was found covered in massive tentacle marks, marks that could only have been made by a large squid. 
that particular shark escaped with its life. But who knows how many others weren't so lucky. Given how little we know about giant squid, it's tough to say for sure. What we do know is that these squid engage in something called diurnal vertical migration. Yep, try saying that three times fast. Basically, they rise to the surface at night to hunt and retreat to the deep during the day to avoid predators. So, it's possible that one of these monstrous squid surfaced, encountered Shark Alpha, and dragged it down into the dark depths for a meal. Sounds like the case closed, right? Not quite. There's still one pesky detail that throws a wrench in the works. The sudden spike in temperature when Shark Alpha got eaten. If a giant squid had been responsible, we wouldn't expect that sharp jump to 78 Fahrenheit. Squids are cold-blooded creatures, meaning their internal temperature would match the surrounding water, around 46 degrees Fahrenheit in this case. So once again, we're left scratching our heads. The squid theory fits in many ways, but that temperature spike? It's a deal breaker. Whatever ate Shark Alpha, it seems we're still missing a crucial piece of the puzzle. Since the tag recorded a temperature jump to 78 degrees Fahrenheit, we know Shark Alpha was devoured by a warm-blooded creature, one with an internal temperature higher than the surrounding water. That rules out the giant squid since, as a cold-blooded animal, its body would have been the same temperature as the water. So, after all that, the squid theory is out. The Megalodon Theory But this leaves us in a bit of a bind. We've eliminated the most likely suspects, which means it's time to think a little more creatively. What if we're not dealing with a known predator at all? Sure, killer whales are the only modern natural predators of great whites, but in the distant past, the oceans were full of shark-eating monsters. Creatures like the Megalodon, an ancient shark species that could grow up to 60 feet long, once ruled the seas. And here's where things get interesting. We've only explored about 20% of the ocean. That means there's a vast amount of territory left untouched, hiding who knows what. So, is it completely crazy to suggest that something thought to be extinct, like the Megalodon or another massive sea creature, might still be lurking in the unexplored depths? Considering how little we know about what's out there, maybe not as crazy as it sounds, Ancient Sea Monsters Resurface Let's talk Spinosaurus, a truly terrifying contender, at least on paper. This beast was the largest predatory dinosaur ever to walk the Earth, stretching up to 50 feet long and towering 18 feet high. But the real kicker? It wasn't limited to land. Spinosaurus had massive paddle-like feet for swimming and sealable nostrils to keep water out, making it a powerful semi-aquatic predator. And yep, it likely could have gulped down sharks whole. No problem. So, if a Spinosaurus somehow managed to sneak up on a Great White, Shark Alpha would have been on the menu without a second thought. Of course, there's the minor issue that Spinosaurus hasn't been spotted for, oh, about 72 million years. But hey, the ocean is one heck of a mysterious place, and who's to say for sure what might be lurking down there, right? Still, Spinosaurus was only semi-aquatic, meaning it couldn't stay underwater for long, certainly not at the depths Shark Alpha reached. And given its massive size, if one were still out there, it wouldn't exactly go unnoticed. So, yeah, let's go ahead and rule this one out. Phew. Now, the Mosasaurus, on the other hand, is a much more interesting possibility. This ancient marine reptile was built for life in open waters, meaning it could swim comfortably at great depths. And unlike Spinosaurus, it wouldn't need to come up for air every few minutes. It was truly a creature of the sea. Could a Mosasaurus or something like it be responsible for Shark Alpha's mysterious disappearance? The Mosasaurus is a much more fitting suspect in our search for Shark Alpha's mysterious predator. This ferocious ocean creature coexisted with Spinosaurus, but it checks all the boxes for our secret shark slayer. The largest Mosasaurus could reach over 50 feet in length, making them quite the sight in the water. With flipper-like limbs and long, shark-like tails, they could zip through the ocean at speeds of at least 30 miles per hour only a bit faster than a great white, but their sheer size gives them a massive advantage. It's safe to say a Mosasaurus could easily chase down and devour a great white with its terrifying razor-sharp teeth. If you're curious about what would happen in a face-off between these two, let's just say it wouldn't be much of a contest. Mosasaurus could be over five times longer and more than ten times heavier than a great white shark. 
that's a recipe for a quick defeat for the shark. However, this intriguing theory rests on the possibility that these ancient marine reptiles somehow survived the eons undetected in the ocean's depths. Is that plausible? Well, when the asteroid struck Earth around 66 million years ago, it wiped out the dinosaurs. But could the sea creatures have found refuge in the water? Sure, the water might have offered some protection from the initial blast, However, any survivors would have faced a grim fate soon after. The impact increased carbon levels in the atmosphere and unleashed acid rain, which gradually acidified the oceans over hundreds of years. That would have made life incredibly challenging for any marine creatures trying to thrive in those conditions. So, while it's a thrilling thought, the survival of Mosasaurus in our oceans today seems pretty unlikely. But then again, in the vast, unexplored depths of the ocean, who knows what might still be lurking? The search continues. The acidification of the oceans became so intense that it led to the mass extinction of nearly all marine organisms. Most just couldn't handle those harsh conditions. So, the chances of a Mosasaurus dodging that fate are practically zero. Fine, it looks like we can officially rule out any dinosaur-era candidates. But there's still one creature from the past that keeps nagging at my mind. The Megalodon, the largest shark that ever lived. And unlike the dinosaurs, there are plenty of people who believe it could still be swimming around today. Now bear with me while I go change my underwear, because this beast is nothing short of terrifying. Fossil evidence suggests that Megalodon could grow up to 60 feet long, which is about the size of a large dinosaur. Imagine that! This colossal shark had jaws that could open over 11 feet wide, large enough to gulp down a great white, or even two adult humans whole. While humans weren't around when Megalodon roamed the seas over 3 million years ago, sharks definitely were. And scientists agree that those massive jaws and rows of enormous teeth would have made sharks a prime target on its menu. Just think about it. The sheer size of those teeth, some reaching over 7 inches long, would have been more than enough to take down just about any shark in the ocean. Could it be that a creature of such epic proportions is still out there, lurking in the unexplored depths, and that it was responsible for the mysterious fate of Shark Alpha? The idea is both exhilarating and terrifying. Just take a look at the size difference between a Great White Tooth and a Megalodon Tooth. Yikes! With its incredible speed and immensely powerful bite, the Megalodon was undoubtedly one of the fiercest predators to ever exist. So, it's hard to believe that such a colossal creature could just vanish without putting up a fight. Given that it's basically a giant shark, could it still be lurking in the depths of the ocean? Interestingly, this wouldn't be the first time a fish was wrongly thought to be extinct. The Calacanth, a deep-sea fish, was considered extinct until its rediscovery off the coast of Africa in 1938. But here's the catch. It's relatively easy to lose track of smaller fish populations, hiding in the vastness of the deep sea. In contrast, megalodons were larger than a school bus. Plus, scientists believe they often hung out in shallow coastal areas, places where we would typically spot them. However, just because we haven't seen them doesn't mean they're extinct. There's a possibility that this ancient giant has evolved over millions of years and now resides in the depths, adapting to life in the ocean's dark, mysterious waters. While it's technically feasible, we have to consider how much has changed over the millennia. Humans only emerged as Homo sapiens around 300,000 years ago, and look at how much we've changed since then. If megalodons were alive today and living secretly in the deep sea, they'd probably look quite different as well. Deep sea life has to adapt to survive in their environment feeding on the sparse species that live near the ocean floor. So, if a megalodon is still swimming around, it might have transformed into a completely different creature altogether. Just imagine what a modern-day megalodon would look like in the shadows of the deep. Sharks that have evolved to thrive at deep-sea depths tend to be slow movers, allowing them to conserve energy and survive on limited food sources. So if the megalodon has indeed adapted to deep-sea life, it might resemble a sleeper shark more than the fierce predator it once was. Sleeper sharks are generally unaggressive and move slowly, making them a lot less badass than the traditional image of a megalodon. This means that if an evolved, modern-day megalodon exists, it likely wouldn't have the speed or explosive power needed to take down a 9-foot great white shark. What do you think? Could a megalodon still be lurking out there in some form? I'd love to hear your theories in the comments. The Liviatan Enigma 
Now, don't worry. I've got a few more intriguing theories up my sleeve. We can't talk about the ocean's most powerful predators without mentioning Liviatan melvilli. You may not have heard of it, but this supposedly extinct type of sperm whale could have given the megalodon a run for its money. With enormous teeth measuring up to 14 inches long, excluding the tusks, it had the largest teeth of any known animal, alive or extinct. Imagine a creature like that prowling the ocean depths, armed with those massive gnashers. Liviatan was likely a fierce competitor in the marine food chain, capable of hunting large prey, including sharks. So, while the megalodon remains a tantalizing possibility, Liviatan is another fascinating contender in the search for the ultimate ocean predator. Who knows what else might be hiding in the deep blue? It's widely accepted that this freakishly large creature has been extinct for around 9 million years, but the reason for its extinction remains murky. Just imagine a tooth the size of a bowling pin. One theory suggests that global cooling events led to the extinction of Liviatan, as many of its prey couldn't adapt to the cooler waters. But this raises an interesting question. Why did other sharks and whales manage to survive while preying on the same food source? One possibility is that Liviatan's immense size required more food than smaller predators, making it more vulnerable to food shortages. Still, the exact reasons are uncertain. However, there's a significant point that raises skepticism about Liviatan's survival. Just like modern dolphins and whales, Liviatan had to come to the surface to breathe. If they were still around today, they would need to surface regularly, making it highly unlikely they could remain unseen for 9 million years, given their size. The Sound of the Deep Honestly, this deep dive into marine mysteries is getting a bit overwhelming. With all these theories and evidence, I'm starting to wonder if we'll ever truly crack the case of Shark Alpha's disappearance. It's a tangled web of hypotheses, and the ocean holds so many secrets that might just stay hidden. Lovecraft's infamous creature, Cthulhu. Naturally, this sparked all sorts of speculation about the possibility of ancient, monstrous beings lurking in the deep. The mysterious sound, dubbed the bloop, was first detected in 1997 by researchers monitoring for volcanic activity in the Southern Pacific Ocean. This extremely loud noise was unlike anything scientists had ever encountered before. While it might seem improbable for an animal to produce such a sound, many creatures in the ocean create strange noises. Take the black drumfish, for instance. It produces peculiar sounds by using specialized muscles that vibrate against its swim bladder. So, it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility that a much larger, undiscovered creature could emit an even louder and stranger sound. When conspiracy theorists heard about the bloop, they quickly jumped to sensational conclusions. They noted that the sound was recorded near the area thought to be home to the fictional sunken city of Rolia, where H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu is said to be imprisoned. This connection only fueled the fires of speculation about the existence of ancient sea monsters lurking in the unexplored depths of our oceans. While the scientific community ultimately determined that the bloop likely originated from ice quakes or underwater ice movement, the sheer mystery of it all has kept the imagination alive. Who knows what else is hidden in the dark corners of the ocean waiting to be discovered? The deep sea is still largely unexplored, and the possibilities for new and mysterious creatures are endless. Lovecraft's mythical sea monster, Cthulhu, certainly captured the imagination of horror enthusiasts, leading some to speculate whether such a giant, tentacled beast might actually exist. Now, don't get me wrong, Cthulhu could definitely take down a great white shark, but let's be real, it's purely a figment of fiction. And honestly, I'm kind of relieved about that. As for the bloop, it took scientists years to unravel its mystery, and the truth turned out to be far less thrilling than some might have hoped. It wasn't some giant, undiscovered creature lurking in the depths. Instead, it was simply the sound of sea ice cracking and breaking, something that happens quite frequently in the Southern Ocean. When they released the audio to the public, it had been sped up by a factor of 16, turning what was actually a natural phenomenon into an otherworldly noise. Definitely less Cthulhu and more ordinary ice sounds. So, back to the question. What really devoured the great white shark? Well, here's the twist. I might have known the answer all along. But hey, the journey of wild theories was half the fun, right? The Chilling Revelation 
In reality, the case was cracked wide open in 2014, over 10 years after Dave and Janine first discovered the dead whales that kick-started this entire saga. The real answer is just as chilling as any of my theories. Researchers began to track the migration patterns of other great white sharks swimming through the kill zone and stumbled upon something shocking. The tracking data from these sharks matched the patterns recorded by Shark Alpha's tracker. Wait, what? Yeah, that sudden spike in temperature that had puzzled scientists for years? It finally made sense. That temperature was identical to the internal temperature of a great white shark. Out of all the possible culprits, nobody had ever considered that another great white could have been the one to take down Shark Alpha. So great whites aren't typically big enough for this kind of predation. But here's where things take a dark turn. Shark Alpha wasn't just consumed by any old great white. Nope, it was taken down by a massive 16-foot-long cannibal great white shark. And I'm not kidding around here. This monstrous shark likely suffered from a condition known as gigantism, which means it had abnormally high levels of growth hormone, making it grow to an astounding size. At 16 feet long, it probably tipped the scales at over 2 tons, more than double shark alpha's weight. Now you might be wondering why this colossal creature would resort to eating one of its own kind. Well, it's not all that unusual for sharks of regular size to munch on smaller ones. So it stands to reason that a giant shark would go after a more typical sized shark, right? But here's the kicker. If great whites don't usually dive to the depths where shark alpha met its fate, why would this gigantic predator drag its meal down so deep? We don't have a definitive answer, but there have been rare instances of great whites diving as deep as 4,000 feet. Based on the timing of Shark Alpha's temperature spike, we know the Super Shark made its meal at the end of the dive. This likely means it grabbed Shark Alpha and plummeted down to disorient it, making the final kill easier. Talk about brutal. Now before you swear off the ocean for good, here's a small glimmer of hope. Sharks typically aren't interested in humans as prey. So, chances are, you've got little to fear from this cannibalistic giant. That said, I can think of a million places I'd rather take a dip than in Bremer Bay's infamous kill zone. Seriously, maybe I should just invest in a paddling pool and call it a day. So there you have it, case closed. Or at least that's the consensus among most. In conclusion, it turns out that even the most fearsome predators aren't safe from the ocean's dark depths and its truly terrifying inhabitants. Thanks for joining us. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in our next video.